Greetings. I recently picked up this Macintosh LC from a local seller. He was just, I got a good price on it and had been looking to collect uh, one of these old vintage Macs. And, you know, as you can see here, it's in really good condition, doesn't really have any significant yellowing. And so I got it home, pretty excited, turned it on, powered, it booted, and you know, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, but then, an interesting thing, uh, I went to try and start it up again the following day, and I got this. Looks like I'll need to get a new one. Problem is, I can't just use any old hard drive. Most Macintoshes of the era used an interface called SCSI, which is different from the IDE ATA interfaces found on most PCs. Looking on eBay gets me on to the first problem with SCSI hard drives, and that is they are quite expensive, especially for what you get. Problem number two, just look at this thing, it's ancient. Am I getting anywhere replacing my old vintage hard drive with another old vintage hard drive? As this illustration shows, there are three different interfaces offered on SCSI drives. Our old vintage machines use the 50-pin interface as shown at the top. Many of the drives you'll find are also available in 68-pin and 80-pin connectors. Now yes, you can use adapters to correct for this, but that's just another thing you have to get. The drive here on the left could represent our modern slimline hard drives, and this could represent a standard height hard drive. But many of the SCSI hard drives you'll find on the market are double height or even bigger. And that represents a space problem. And now on to the last, but what I think is one of the most serious problems with SCSI hard drives on vintage Macintoshes, is compatibility. Apple's provided formatter utility won't recognize most hard drives. So I decided to look for a solution to all of these problems, which is in the form of solid state storage. The device I ended up settling on was this SCSI 2SD version 5 that I found on eBay for about $79. First, we need to mount it to this bracket. Then we clip this bracket in, just like so. Snaps in place. Then we hook up our power and SCSI. Instead of using Apple's formatter, I opted for a third-party solution. The program I'm using here is called Drive 7. One thing to keep in mind is the maximum partition sizes of the OS you are using. And here you can see the partitions I created mounted successfully. I'm curious what happens though if I take the SD card that this formatted and plug it into my modern Macintosh. Okay, it looks like it mounts. However, I can't actually drag and drop files onto it. Okay, what was my opinion of the device? Well, if we go back through our list of the problems that traditional SCSI hard drives had, let's see how it fared. So, just to recap, it's very reasonably priced. This is a new product, not a 30-year-old hard drive. Furthermore, SD cards are likely to be around for quite some time. It uses the same 50-pin interface that our legacy Macs use. It is small enough to easily fit in any case or enclosure. It is absolutely, completely silent. Even though I used a third-party formatter, the drive settings can be changed to enable native Apple support, or you can use a patched Apple formatter. So, to sum it all up, I actually do recommend this product. I think it solves all the major problems that we collectors of vintage Macintoshes face. 
it worked beautifully for me. And unless you're really hardcore trying to preserve the uh, authenticity of the machine by only using genuine vintage hardware, then I think this is a perfect solution. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below.